The beauty pageant celebrates plus size models and women in general, thus promoting body positivity and a platform to showcase body confidence. <laughs> Susanna Wio, Jennifer, Judy Buire soon emerged on the scene, a tradition that has surpassed melodiously. to destroy you. No, I found It's an hammer, baby. What? Leo? No. It's your Leo. I'm going to kill you. 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 I'm going to kill Sorry for the disappointment. Do you want to kill Of course, not you. There's no time for jokes, Papa. Ah, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, the CEO of Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, popularly known as KDIC. The corporation recently increased the protected sum from the previous 100,000 shillings to 500,000 shillings per account. This is the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In effect, the corporation now covers 99% of the depositors in the unlikely event of a closure of a bank. So KDIC encourages the depositors to continue doing business with our banks that are strong and resilient. Be sure, check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC, protecting your deposits. Namuhali gani mpenzi mtazamaji karibu kwenye darubini ya Channel 1 na ikiwa tarehe 6 mwezi wa 11 mwaka 2021. Kweli kabisa na tumeanza wiki ambayo itatupeleka mpaka siku kuu 
ya Jamhuri Day ambayo itafanyika siku ya Jumapili na naona tayari Wizara ya Elimu imeanza kutafakari kuhusu uwezekano wa kurejeshwa kwa viboko shuleni. Maoni yako ni yapi? Nadhani inafikia kurejeshwa. Sasa hapa itabidi kuwe na mjadala mm -hmm. kati ya walimu, wanafunzi na vile vile wazazi. Kweli kabisa. Uh -huh. Ni swala ambayo tutakuwa tunayazamia katika darubini siku ile. Bila shaka mtazamaji lakini kwanza tupate videokezo. We need to introduce caning back in schools. Wizara ya elimu yataka adhabu ya kiboko irejeshwe shuleni. Azimio la umoja kwenda mkutano wazi uwanjani Kasarani Ijumaa Ruto naye akiendelea na ziara ya Kenyeri. Na Biashara ya mboga na matunda ya ilitia Kenya mapato ya shilingi bilioni 145 katika miezi kumi na moja ya kwanza ya mwaka huu. Na leo kwenye utafiti mwishoni mwa darubini sarafina nitakuwa na onyesha mwanamke aliyeolewa mara nyingi zaidi duniani. Mhm. Mm Wewe usikose kutegemea mwishoni mwa darubini. Karibu naitwa Boni Musambi. Na mimi mtazamaji naitwa Sarafina Robi mwenzetu wa ishara ni Lensa Odingo. Tukianza ni kwa Wizara ya Elimu sasa inatafakari kuhusu kurejeshwa adhabu ya viboko shuleni ili kukabiliana na visa vya utovu wa nidhamu. Kweli kabisa Waziri wa Elimu Profesa George Magoha anasema wakati muadia wa kurejesha adhabu ya viboko ili kukita nidhamu miongoni mwa wanafunzi ambao wana mtindo wa kutelekeza shule. Wakati wa huo Profesa Magoha amewahimiza wazazi kukita nidhamu miongoni mwa watoto wao na wasitarajie walimu kufanya miujiza ili kuarekebisha wanafunzi wenye utovu wa maadili We need to introduce caning back in schools like yesterday and the parents should stop producing children or when you produce when you produce them by the grace of God discipline them do not expect our teachers to do the impossible which human right is there when you want to ban your colleagues in 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 the homes and that conversation involve as to whether we still need boarding schools or not i think we need a national conversation on parenting zao we keep me i was very angry yesterday if you know what has gone into building the high school and we saw maranda going up in smoke like that yesterday sisi zote tuje hapa tujenge hapa mna hii alafu sasa kesho watu waanze let us all join hands leaders i'm asking my political leaders my friends sisi sote tuzungumze na sauti moja we must discipline our children and we must insist on some things we cannot create a society of animals sasa kazi yetu ni kujenga mashule na kazi yao ni kuchoma hai Tukiachana na hayo ni kwamba kesi ya mauaji inayowakabili maafisa watano wa kituo cha polisi cha Changamwe imeahirishwa kwa muda usiojulikana. Kesi hiyo imesimamishwa baada ya maafisa hao watuhumiwa kutaka kubuni wajopo la kuchunguza kifo cha Caleb Otieno katika kituo hicho cha polisi katika kaunti ya Mombasa. Kusikizwa kwa kesi ya mauaji na wakabili maafisa wa polisi Khalifa Abdullahi Sigat, James Mulikoti, Joseph Odhiambo Sirawa, Edward Kongo Onchonga na Nelson Nkanai wote wanahudumu katika kituo cha polisi cha Changamwe kumeaherishwa. Watu hawa wanakabiliwa na mashtaka ya kumuua Kalibotino aliyedaiwa kuuawa katika kituo hicho cha polisi. Kulingana na taarifa kutoka halmashauri ya kusimamia utendakazi wa polisi Ipoma, marehemu Kalib Otino anasemekana kwa gadunia saa kadhaa baada ya kukamatwa na polisi kwa madai ya kubugia pombe haramu katika sehemu ya mikindani mnamo mwaka 2018 ambako ripoti ya upasuaji wa maiti ilibaini kwamba marehemu aliagadunia kutokana na majeraha yaliyosababishwa na kifaa butu kupitia wakili wa shikio hao Danstan Omari maafisa hao wamewasilisha mahakamani ombi la kutaka uchunguzi wa kina kufanywa kuhusiana na kifo hicho huku pia akisema kwamba wamewasilisha ombi la kuangaliwa tena ombi la dhamana lilokataliwa awali 
Wakati huo huo Chris Pinomondi kwa utani Evans Kiprono ambaye alikuwa ameshtakiwa kwa makosa tisa yakiwemo makosa ya kulaghai kampuni ya bima ya Jubilee shilingi 12689 kwa kutafuta huduma za matibabu kwa kutumia stakabadhi gushi za kampuni hiyo ya bima amehukumiwa kifungo cha miaka mitatu gerezani Hatimaye gavana wa Meru Kirei Tumurungi ameelekea mahakamani kutaka mbunge wa Iyala Mpuru wa Bure kushtakiwa kwa kosa la kumwaribia jina. Kaitu ambaye hapo awali alikuwa ameondoa kesi ya mahakamani anasema kuwa mbunge huyo anatumia vyombo vyake vya habari kumwaribia jina lake na la familia yake. He also said that uh, our accounts in South Africa where I'm banking the money which is being collected in Meru County. So we decided to take him to court because no man ama ni mheshimiwa ama si mheshimiwa uwe sambavu the law na mtazamaji na kwenye ulingo wa siasa ni kwa naibu wa rais Ruto amewataka washindani wake wakome kutumia haki ya mfumo wa kisheria kuendeleza ajenda zao za kisiasa naibu wa rais aliwataka kutayarisha ajenda zao za kuzipigi, na kuzipigia debe kwa wakenya ambao ndio walio na uamuzi wa mwisho kwa masala ya uchaguzi Ruto alishangaa ni kwa nini washindani wake wa kisiasa wanatumia mfumo wa kisheria kuwahangaisha na kuwahada wafuasi wake kwa siku ya tatu mfululizo naibu wa rais William Ruto aliendeleza kampeni yake ya ajenda ya hasla kwa watu wa Nyeri. Akiongea wakati wa mipango ya kutoa uwezo, Ruto aliwahakikishia wakenya kwamba endapo atachaguliwa kuwa rais, wa nchi hii siasa hazitaingizwa kwenye mfumo wa kisheria wa nchi hii. Encourage our competitors stop using the criminal justice system to intimidate our supporters. Look for a plan, look for a manifesto, sell to the people of Kenya. The people of Kenya are intelligent. They will be able to make choices. Ruto aliwahakikishia wa Kenya kwamba ajenda nne kuu za maendeleo zilizozinduliwa na serikali ya Jubilee zitatekelezwa iwapo atachukua hatamu za uongozi wa nchi hii. If we have to grow the economy of our nation, we must support the SMEs and the SMEs must be given resources that in, at interest they can afford and with security they can find Viongozi wa eneo la mlima Kenya waliandamana naye walisema hawatatikiswa na vitisho kwa sababu ajenda ya chama cha UDA inawafaa watu wa eneo hilo yeah, Watu wa Kieni watu wa huku charity nijue hii safari ni ya kuuda serikali and we have made a deliberate decision as the Hasra nation that this election is going to be peaceful and that we are going to conduct dignified campaigns vile vile naibu wa rais amekariri kujitolea kwake kuwekeza katika sekta ya kilimo ili kuangamiza njaa humo nchini Ruth Wamboi Darubini sasa tugeukie chama cha ODM ambapo kiongozi wa chama hicho Raila Odinga anasema mkutano wa kasarani wa Ijumaa ijayo utawaleta pamoja wa Kenya wote bila kujali misingi yao ya kisiasa kusherekea na kuleta umoja wa kitaifa. Akiongea alipowapokea waoniaji kutoka kaunti ya Kajiado wanaodaiwa kukihama chama cha United Democratic Alliance, Raila alisema mkutano huo hautakuwa wa chama cha ODM bali wa vyama vyote vya kisiasa vilivyo na mtazamo sawa. Ijumaa tarehe kumi mwezi huu chama cha ODM kitaviongoza vyama vingine vya kisiasa vilivyo na maono sawa kwa kongamano la azimio la umoja litakaloandaliwa katika uwanja wa michezo wa kimataifa wa Kasarani ambako Raila Odinga anatarajiwa kutangaza azma yake ya kugombea urais kwa mara ya tano kongamano hilo litatumiwa kusherehekea maafikiano ya mwaka 2018 kati ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na kiongozi wa upinzani Raila Odinga yalioleta umoja wa kitaifa kufuatia uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2017 uliokuwa umeigawanya nchi hii so that day itakuwa siku ambaye wa Kenya watasherekea wa Kenya watajivinjari na wa Kenya watasikia hutuba ya Rais watano ambaye tunatarajia atakubali 
wale vile wananchi wameambia yeye eh, katika sehemu kumi na ine siku hiyo ndo tutasikia kama amekubaliana na hawa ama haja kubaliana na hawa kiongozi wa chama cha ODM Raila Odinga akiwapokea waniaji wa uchaguzi mkuu mwaka ujao waliokihama chama cha UDA alielezea kongamano hilo la azimio la umoja kuwa fursa ya kuiunganisha tena nchi hii kwa minajili ya ufanisi wa taifa hili siku hiyo ni sherehe kubwa harusi kubwa ya wakenya wote wanataka kuona watu wa maa wanakuja pali wakijivisha na hili nguzao za kitamaduni eh? na wamebeba hili mkuki yao wamebaa zili ni ya wale hii hii <laughs> Vyama vyote vya kisiasa vinavyounga mkono maafikiano hayo vimetengewa nafasi kwa wajumbe wao katika uwanja wa Kasarani. Chama cha ODM kimawali kwa wajumbe watano kutoka kila wadi hata ingawa kinatarajia watu wengi kuhudhuria. Kevin Washira Darubini. Na mtazamaji utakuwa upata mkutano huo moja kwa moja kutoka hapa KBC mm. siku ya Ijumaa. Kweli kabisa usikose sasa tunachukua pumziko fupi na tukirejea tutakuwa na taarifa zaidi lakini tunashukuru sana kwa kwa wewe ambao unazidi kutazama hata mtandaoni kwenye Facebook na kuna wengine ambao wanasema wanatazama wanatufahamisha katika mitandao ya Twitter mm-hmm. nimemwona Boniface Musimi anasema anatazama uh, pamoja na Wickliff Bukachi Webungo wanasema pia wako ndani ya darubini mm-hmm. tunachukua mapumziko mafupi sana tunarejea na taarifa zaidi We believe that Kenyans are one nation. It is also consistent with the African people's past and present efforts to secure unity. It is also the logical answer to the challenge which Kenya or, or any new nation must face after independence. The consolidation of independence urgent economic reconstruction and development the need to make an impact and have influence at pan african and international affairs must be our immediate aim story to share with KBC get in touch swiftly on email newsroom at kbc.co.ke call 0723892654 or 0734780124 Na mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama darubini ya Channel 1 kumbuka unaweza kutupata mbashara pale Facebook, Twitter na YouTube at KBC Channel 1 at Bonnie Musambi na at Sarafin Robi. Tukiendelea ni kwa mama wa taifa Margaret Kenyatta amewahimiza wadau wa jamii kuunga mkono njia mbadala za kuingia utu uzima zinazohusisha utoaji ushauri na saha ili kuchukua mahala pa ukeketaji wa sichana. Mama wa taifa aliwahimiza wadau wa kampeni ya kupinga ukeketaji kuhimiza utumiaji njia mbadala za kuingia utu uzima huku akizihimiza taasisi husika zilegeze kamba kwenye vita vyao dhidi ya utamaduni huo uliopitwa na wakati. 
Mama wa taifa aliyekuwa akiongea leo jijini Nairobi alipozindua mpango wa uchunguzi wa soko na biashara wa shanga za Johari unaokusudiwa kuimarisha biashara ya shanga na kuunga mkono juhudi za kukomesha ukeketaji wa wasichana humo nchini ifikie hapo mwishoni mwa mwaka huu alisema nchi hii ina mengi ya kujivunia kutoka kwa wanawake wake na wasichana alipongeza hatua ya biashara ya Johari akisema ina uwezo mkubwa kuwapa uwezo wanawake kutoka jamii za wafugaji na jamii zingine zinazotengeneza shanga an emblem of the eradication of FGM more importantly they have become a key source of income for women in the seven counties where this cultural practice is most prevalent West Pokot Baringo Samburu Turkana Narok Marsabit and Kajiado the proposal to take girls through a 15 day initiation program comprising of sessions on mentorship into adulthood healthy relationships life skills training basic home economics and the art of bead making is welcome and a way forward Mkewe rais alikariri kwamba ukeketaji una athari za kiafya kwa wanawake chipukizi na huwafanya kuacha shule na kuolewa wakiwa wangali na umri mdogo hivyo basi kusambaratisha ndoto zao za kujiendeleza kijamii na kiuchumi. To achieve gender equality as required by our constitution 2010 and ensure that Kenyan women realize their full potential we must end FGM. Alisema mpango huo unawaletea mapato wanawake katika kaunti saba za wafugaji za Pokot Magharibi, Baringo, Samburu, Turkana, Narok, Marsabit na Kajiado ambapo ukeketaji unaendelezwa. Alisema mpango huo umefikia zaidi ya wanawake 5000 na kuwasaidia kuanzisha vyama stini vya ushirika. Waziri wa Michezo na Utamaduni Amina Mohamed alisema mpango huo unaendelea kushika kasi kimataifa na utatumiwa kwa maonyesho huko Dubai, Venice na Milan. To increase market access for communities involved in bid work through value addition enhance income for women from bid making communities and poverty in line with agendas of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals nikiripoti ya darubini mimi ni zainab said tugeukie covid 19 na ni kwamba kufikia sasa zaidi ya watu milioni 7.5 wamechanjwa dhidi ya ugonjwa huu wa COVID-19 humu chini kulingana na Wizara ya Afya jumla ya watu milioni 4.9 hawajachanjwa kikamilifu ila hali zaidi ya watu milioni 2.9 wamechanjwa kikamilifu 32 zaidi wameambukizwa ugonjwa huo wa COVID-19 kutokana na sampuli 2893 zilizopimwa katika saa 24 zilizopita hii inaashiria kiwango cha maambukizi cha asilimia moja nukta moja. hakuna kifo chochote kilichoripotiwa hivyo basi jumla ya watu waliofariki kutokana na ugonjwa wa COVID-19 inasalia kwa 5500 335 takwimu kutoka chuo kikuu cha John Hopkins zinaonyesha kwamba zaidi ya watu milioni 265 wameambukizwa ugonjwa huu na zaidi ya watu milioni 5.2 wamefariki baada ya kuambukizwa ugonjwa huo wa COVID-19 sasa basi tukiachana na haya ya COVID-19 tugeukie mengine ambayo pia yameatua mioyo ya wengi na ni kwamba dereva wa aliyekuwa mbunge wa mwingi ya kati Joe Mutambu alifariki papo hapo baada ya gari alilokuwa kiendesha kupata ajali katika eneo la Kavenge katika barabara kuu ya Dhika kuelekea mwingi jana usiku mbunge huyo pia alikuwa katika ajali hiyo na alinusurika kifo na kupata majeraha katika ajali hiyo iliyohusisha tingatinga Ndiyo mabaki ya ajali mbaya barabarani iliyosababisha kifo cha dereva wa aliyekuwa mbunge wa Mwingi ya Kati. Mbunge huyo wa zamani alikuwa ameondoka eneo la mkasa wa ajali ya mto Enziu ambapo zaidi ya watu 33 waliaga dunia baada ya basi la chuo cha mafunzo cha dini cha St Joseph's kuzama katika mto huo siku ya Jumamosi. Mmoja wa relative wangu ambaye anafanya kwangu ikasemekana kwa sababu wale watu waliangamia pale kwa maji waliacha watoto na robi akakuwa imesemekana akimbia na robi ndio enda akaleta watoto na ndipo tukakubaliana kwamba nimuchukue kwa sababu tuliona tukilala inaweza nyesha tena na mtu ufunge na wao watoto wako kule na wana mtu pia wako na shida so mimi nikajitolea tukajitolea na dereva wangu 
tukasema wacha tukimbie Nairobi kwa mujibu wa kamanda wa polisi wa kaunti ndogo ya Masinga Rashid Ali gari la Jomo Tambo lilibingilia mara kadhaa baada ya kugongana na tingatinga nakutana na hiyo tingatinga ambayo ilikuwa inaenda e, upande wa Kivyoko mahali sisi tumetoka na ni kama ilikuwa na mata na ilikuwa katikati ya barabara na ilikuwa inaonekana kwa sababu ni ya blue na haikuwa na reflection yote tumefanya kuingia Mutambu pamoja na abiria wengine watatu walionusurika ajali hiyo walipata majeraha na kupata matibabu katika hospitali ya Matu ya level 4. Mtazamaji karibu kwenye safu ya biashara ambapo wakulima wa parachichi wanaotaka kuuza mazao yao yao wapasa kuvuna tu matunda lokoma ili kuepuka kuiharibia sifa nchi hii huko ngambo haya yalichipuza huku kaimu mkurugenzi wa halmashauri ya kilimo na mazao nchini yanayohusika na mazao ya mboga na matunda Benjamin Tito akisema uchunguzi uliofanya mwezi Septemba mwaka huu ulifichwa kwamba wakulima wengi wanauza parachichi ambazo hazijakomaa na kusababisha mauzo ku fungwa kwa miezi miwili hadi katikati ya mwezi ujao. Kwa habari hizi na nyingine huwa hapa ni mseto wetu wa habari za biashara. Nchi hii inarejelea uuzaji maembe katika soko la bara Ulaya baada ya kusimamisha uuzaji zao hilo kwa miaka saba ili kukabiliana na changamoto zilizokumba uuzaji zao hilo. Kaimu mkurugenzi wa shirika la chakula na kilimo anayehusika na mazao ya mboga na matunda Benjamin Tito anasema mikakati imewekwa kwa wauzaji kuanza kusafirisha maembe na parachichi zao hadi soko la bara Ulaya. This gives the off season time to be able to attain the required sizes of between size 22 and 24 especially for fuete and as varieties wakati huo huo nyumba 1500 za thamani ya shilingi bilioni 20 zinatarajiwa kujengwa huko Atriva Kaunti ya Machakos chini ya ajenda moja kuu ya serikali ya ujenzi wa nyumba za gharama nafuu Mradi huo uliozinduliwa na shirika la kitaifa la kufadhili ujenzi wa nyumba unaojulikana kama Stone Earth Waterfront City utatekelezwa katika ardhi ya ekari 150. The cooperation has the ability to structure financial solutions that can benefit homeowners through collaborations with local banks as well as other financial partners. The projects that NEC makes will benefit Kenyans as they are intended to make housing accessible and affordable. Mwishowe, wakulima na wamiliki wa hoteli kutoka katika kaunti ya Nyandarua wanatarajiwa kunufaika na soko la mazao mabichi litakalojengwa mjini Naivasha na hazina ya kimataifa ya masuala ya mazingira na bodi ya manispaa ya Naivasha. Chini ya ushirikiano huo, bodi ya manispaa ya Naivasha itatoa ardhi kwa ujenzi wa soko hilo ili hali shirika hilo la utunzi wa mazingira kufadhili ujenzi wa soko hilo ambao unatarajiwa kukamilika mwezi machi mwakani we as wwf will support the board in actually actualizing the the national ambition and the county ambition to actually champion uh, green spaces and also green Uh, and sustainable production and consumption patterns and as an organization we will work with the board to help them set up uh, the green uh, 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 facility within the park and uh, and of course the farmers in uh, providing an opportunity to be able to sell their produce Leo nasimama kwa nafasi yake Timothy Kipnusu ambaye labda amefungiwa na mvua 
lakini kesho atajiunga na si na ni kwamba mabingwa wa ligi kuu ya soka mchini Tasca FC walibanduliwa kwenye kinyang'anyiro cha kuania kombe la shirikisho barani Afrika baada ya kushindwa bao moja kwa sufuri na SC Faxien kwenye mechi ya mundoano ya marudiano iliyochezwa katika uwanja wa Tayeba Mhiri Tasca ili banduliwa mashindanoni kwa jumla ya bao moja kwa sufuri baada ya kutoka sare tasa kwenye mechi ya mkondo wa kwanza iliyochezwa uwanjani Nyayo. Amen Harzi alifungia CS Faxien bao hilo la kipekee kupitia mkwaju wa penalti na kuisaidia timu hiyo kufuzu kwa mechi za makundi. Kubanduliwa kwa Tasca FC kulitokea saa chache tu baada ya Gor Mahia kutoka sare ya bao moja kwa moja dhidi ya AS Otoho Odoyo ya Congo Brazzaville katika uwanja wa kitifo Nyayo na kubanduliwa uliwa pia kwenye mashindano hayo Aden Mohamed wa idara ya polisi alibuka mshindi wa mashindano ya ulengaji shabaha iliyoandaliwa na katika klabu cha Amodamp katika eneo la Kweni ya Magadi E, Wilberforce Kareme pia alichukua nafasi ya pili na Jeremiah Doki akaridhika na nafasi ya tatu. Tio Ayub Mugo alibuka mshindi kwenye kitengo cha vijana chipukizi kwa alama tisini Mashindano hayo yaliyoandaliwa na shirikisho la ulengaji shabaha huko nchini yaliyojumuisha washiriki tisa Katika kitengo cha wanawake, Nun Bonaya aliibuka mshindi na Joyce Chebi wa KDF na Irene Wanjiku wakaridhika na nafasi za pili na tatu mtawalia. My dad told me that we are going for an adventure today. Then I didn't know where we were going. So we came here for shooting. I would like to join the army and be a general. Alikuwa afisa wa ushauri katika shirikisho la soka barani Afrika CAF Abdel Moneim Shata ameelezea wasiwasi wake kuhusu maandalizi ya kombe la bara Afrika mwaka 2021 nchini Kamerun kombe la bara Afrika limeratibiwa kuandaliwa nchini Kamerun kuanzia Januari 9 hadi Februari 6 mwaka 2022 Kombe la bara Afrika lilikuwa limeratibiwa kuandaliwa mwezi Juni na Julai mwaka 2022 lakini CAF ikafutilia mbali mashindano hayo kutokana na hali mbaya anga katika kipindi hicho na kutangaza Januari 9 hadi Januari 6 mwaka 2021 kuwa tarehe za maandalizi hata hivyo mwezi Juni mwaka 2020 CAF iliairisha mashindano hayo kwa mara ya pili hadi Januari mwaka 2022 kutokana na janga la COVID-19 kulingana na shata hali ya sintofahamu inazingira maandalizi ya kombe la bara Afrika huku akisema kuwa Kameruni nakabiliwa na changamoto za kukamilisha maandalizi Kamerun ilipewa jukumu la kuandaa kombe la bara Afrika mwaka 2021 baada ya Misri kuandaa makala ya 32 mwaka 2019. Sasa leo katika utafiti nitakutajia mwandada fulani ambaye nimetafuta picha yake lakini si safi sana. Haiwezi kuonekana vizuri kwenye uh, runinga kwa leo sitakupeleka upande ule wa screen. Sasa mwanamke aliyeolewa mara nyingi zaidi duniani na akaweka rekodi anaitwa Linda Wolf. Linda Wolf ni mwanadada kutoka Marekani na aliolewa mara ishirini na tatu katika maisha yake na aliolewa na wanaume tisa. Mara 23. Anaolewa, 
kifika pale mbele anarudia huyu akifika pale anachukua mwingine kifika pale, anachanganya changanya na koroga koroga anaongeza hapo kidogo na mume wake wa mwisho aliaga dunia mwaka 1997 na anasema hivi japo ana umri mkubwa wa karibu miaka sitini anasema kwamba akipata mwingine bado atakubali kuolewa huyo ni Linda Wolf <laughs> Linda Wolf <laughs> kwa raha zake eh, Linda Wolf anaume wangapi <laughs> wanaume tisa uh-huh. na akaloa mara tatu kwa kipindi cha muda mgani kwa uh, muda kipindi uweze kujua ni muda gani lakini mm. ni kile ambacho kinashangaza sana kile kinashangaza zaidi mm-hmm. ni mara ngapi aliolewa maajabu ya dunia mm-hmm. <laughs> na alikuwa anawaacha kwa nini kukosana tu uh-huh. mm-hmm. kukosana tu kama kawaida uh-huh. e, mnaweza kusania kitu kidogo kama chai haikuwa na sukari ya kutosha mm-hmm. ya tukambishie hapo tukutane tena kesho kunapo majaliwa yake Mwenyezi Mungu naitwa Boni Musambi nami mtazamaji naitwa Sarafina Robi mwenzetu ishara imekuwa ni Lensa Odingo kwa na usiku mwana na tukutane tena hapo kesho. Choose joyful time. Get this done. Any time. So good. Choose fist pumping. So good. I got you here. Heart thumping. Oh, I feel nice. Choose drama for days. The sugar and, and your stories. Choose joy. So Choose an nice. HD decoder. Dish kit so plus nice. one month DSTV oh, access for only 2,999 shillings. And enjoy every moment with DSTV. You have to just agree with me that uh, Wizkid is on some really good um, energy and he's on he's just doing his thing and we are loving it. She is now officially into the music industry. She is a secular artist. Guess what? Um Hatuachani got a million views in just three days. Can you imagine that? The beauty pageant celebrates plus size models and women in general, thus promoting body positivity and a platform to showcase body confidence. Susanna Wio, Jennifer, Judy Buire soon emerged on the scene, a tradition that has surpassed melodiously.
My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, the CEO of Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, popularly known as KDIC. The corporation recently increased the protected sum from the previous 100,000 shillings to 500,000 shillings per account. This is the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In effect, the corporation now covers 99% of the depositors in the unlikely event of a closure of a bank. So KDIC encourages the depositors to continue doing business with our banks that are strong and resilient. Be sure, check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC, protecting your deposits.